Hello, this video illustrates how to use a background worker to create multi-threaded programs in C-sharp. <clears throat> I'm gonna begin with a very simple example and then I'm gonna show you how it can be implemented using uh, C-sharp's uh, Windows form application and uh, also using the background worker in a Windows form application. I'm going to first begin running the program and show you a demo and tell you what features we are targeting in this method, uh, in this application. Then I'm going to show you the code and explain how this can be done uh, in the right way using background worker. So let's begin by uh, running the program. So this is the program that I have. It's called Prime Factorizer. It gets a number like this, it's a very long number. And uh, you can click on this factorize to factorize the number. Factorizing a number to its prime factors uh, is a very uh, time consuming uh, operation. That's the basis of uh, uh, the strength behind uh, cryptographic algorithms like uh, RSA. And uh, it's very uh, time consuming to uh, factor out, to factorize a, a big number to its prime factors. So let me hit the factorize because as I said, it's a very uh, time consuming operation. It's better to do it using a background worker as you see uh, the progress bar shows the, uh, the progress. And while it's doing its job, I can, interact with other buttons. Like I can pick the back color, I can choose a different back color, press okay. Then maybe I can like do some other thing. What I'm saying is while the background worker is doing its job on a different thread, the UI is completely responsive to the user's uh, commands. As you, as you see, I'm just keep changing uh, the, the background color and interacting with the UI actively while this one is doing its job. And if I click on the factorize, nothing's gonna happen because I have disabled it. And now after it finishes the job, it says done after you know the progress bar reaches to the end, it says done. It shows me the two prime factors it has. This number was a product of two prime, uh, this number was the product of two other prime numbers or I should say two prime numbers, these two. And uh, I can show you what happens if I have a, a shorter number and I have a smaller task to do. If I press the factorize, this is gonna be much faster. And as you see, the progress bar can get uh, uh, to the 100% faster and all the prime factors are uh, written here, right? I can uh, just make this a little bit shorter and then factorize. As you see, it factor, uh, factorize the, the smallest number, the smaller number. If I can make it, if I make it really fast, then the progress bar will be immediately get to 100% and it prints out all the prime factors of the number, right? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the, the program. Now let's see how this can be done, how we can let a background worker, a different thread, uh, work on uh, factorizing a number, which is a very time consuming operation, while the UI thread is uh, still uh, interacting with the user and let the user to select any button or click on any button or uh, scroll down and up on a list, select an item in a list and all of that. Let's uh, first talk about what's in this uh, form. As you see, there's a background worker, I call it factorizer because it's going to do the factorization, but it's basically, as you see here, it's a background worker, right? So you need a background worker for this operation. And uh, then I'm gonna talk about uh, how the new thread will be spawned when you click on this factorize button. So let's double click on it, talk about the click event handler of that button. 
It says if the factorizer is still busy, don't do anything. That's why when, when the factorizer was calculating all the prime factor, clicking on it was disabled because I said, if the, the other thread that is running the background thread is busy, don't do anything. And otherwise I'm gonna basically clear the list of uh, prime factors that uh, is gonna be a binding list that I have created. And uh, that's the same list that will be shown uh, in, the, in the form one on this, on this list box. And then after I said, after, you know, uh, clearing that uh, list, I have called the run worker async. This method, which gets an input parameter, is going to trigger the do work event on the factorizer, which is the background worker. So the first thing you need to know is this, initiating the worker thread uh, by calling the background worker's run worker as asynchronous will cause the do work event to be triggered, right? And So when you call this run worker asynchronous, uh, the do worker, the do work event will be triggered. So how do you basically let the thread know what to do inside the do work event handler? I have to uh, handle the do work event of uh, the factorizer here. If I show you the factorizer again, uh, on the event handlers, I have a do work, right? And if I click on this, it brings me here. And this event handler basically uh, calls the factorize method or uh, function uh, in the class factorizer, which I have created just for the logic of the program. If I click on it, as you see, by the way, before I move forward, as you see the do work event can have access to the do work event argument that is passed to the run worker asynchronous. Number is the same number that you saw I placed here in this box. So basically when I call the run worker asynchronous, I pass the number text to it so that the uh, thread knows what to, the background worker thread knows what to uh, get as an input and uh, what number should be factorized. And, uh, you know, you can use this as uh, the input, uh, you know, you can use this uh, parameter to pass any input to your uh, background worker thread. In this case, you know, that number, that text, number that text can be retrieved by saying e dot arguments within the event handler of uh, the do work event of the factorizer uh, background worker. So I said e dot argument dot to string should be parsed as a long number and it should be passed to the factorize. Factorize, it's a method which is defined here. It gets a long n and it's going to basically trigger some progress events, which I'm going to explain it. Uh, basically, the factorize. Uh, method is going to do an exhaustive search on all the numbers from uh, two to square root of n. You see this m is a square root of m and the uh, limit is equal to m. So basically it goes from two to a square root of n and does an exhaustive search. It looks for an i that n is divisible by it and uh, i is prime. So it looks for a prime factor of n, right? If it finds it, it's going to trigger an event and it's going to pass that number uh, to the main form, which I'm going to show you how this met, how this event is handled. By the way, the progress is an event that I have defined it myself here. Right? In the event handler of this uh, event in the form one, what I have done is um, to call a method that shows the uh, 
progress of the um, uh, background work here. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let's uh, let's see when this event is going to be triggered. So uh, this event, which is of the delegate factorized progress, has two input parameters. One is the percentage. One is the factor. The reason I have two input parameters is because I use this event to pass two part two types of information. Either I will send a factor, a prime factor, if I find the factor, or I will basically send the percentage. If the exhaustive search has made enough progress that make us reach to the next percentage. So I will start from percentage zero, then it becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to 100. Until uh, it reaches to 100, we're going to trigger 100 of these events uh, with different percentage values. When we have a percentage value that is positive, I set the factor to negative one. If the factor uh, factorized progress event is triggered because of uh, finding a new prime factor, not because of a, pro a, pro a percentage change, then I will leave the percent equal to negative one and uh, pass the uh, prime factor that I just found it to the uh, event uh, factorized progress. So that's basically the logic I had behind this. You can do it in a simpler way, but you know the way I did it is basically, um, I took advantage of both um, input parameters here. You can pass as many parameters as you want. You can pass even one parameter. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's basically all you can do. I mean, it's, it's all your choice what to, what to create as a delegate here and create an event. I'll tell you how this event can help me uh, in the main form after I explain this progress. So if I find the prime factor, I'm going to call the progress with the negative one as the percentage and I as the factor. And then I'm going to continue the search by updating the value of n, updating the limit, and that's it. <clears throat> if, uh, let's say, the prime number um, is found, uh, that is a factor, I do this. Also, if uh, the percentage of progress has been updated, for example, if it was 37%, now it is 38%, or if it was 51%, now it's 52%, I will get into this if. This if basically says, uh, is the current percentage less than uh, I minus one over limit minus one, where I is the counter of the loop and limit is the maximum value of the loop. And if that's the case, then what you gotta do is to trigger another progress event. And this time you gotta update the pass, uh, the percentage to whatever the percentage is currently and uh, trigger the event uh, of progress. The reason we're gonna trigger this event is because we're gonna uh, display it on the progress bar in a, in a proper way. The reason that I have triggered this event is because I wanna pass the new prime value to the form one so it can be displayed on the uh, right hand side display. So let's go back to the uh, form one and let me tell you how this can be handled. So if that progress, which is an event, has been uh, handled using this event handler. So the form one has been subscribed to uh, form that to, to the factorizer that progress. This is a very good etiquette because uh, I have completely uh, decoupled the factorizer logic class from the UI uh, class form one. So form one and factorizer are completely decoupled. Why? Because in factorizer, I have an event that will be triggered. And here in form one, I just handle this event, right? So you can basically copy the factorizer.cs and place it in any uh, project you want with any UI you want, right? So it's completely de decoupled from the form one. What do I do in this uh, event handler? Let's check it out. In this event handler, I will check the factor. If the factor is negative one, that means this 
event has been triggered because a new percentage has been uh, obtained, I will report the progress to my factorizer uh, event handler. Something that you need to understand is that this method rate, uh, report progress is extremely important in a background worker. What it does is it trigger a progress change event that you can handle it after that, afterward uh, in the main form. This is basically the best way to let the UI know that your background worker has made any progress. Just keep that in mind. Another overload of this method or function is report progress with two parameters. If you want to pass the percentage, but at the same time you want to pass some extra information, then you can just pass it after the percentage. So uh, I said, if the factor is negative one, I don't need to pass any new factor. So I just report the percentage. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is, um, because I have a new factor to report, I will basically pass the factor uh, to the report progress as the second parameter. That's going to be an object that you can pass, right? As you see, it says, uh, it gets two values and into percentage uh, percent progress, and the second one is an object user state. The reason I uh, set the uh, percentage equal to progress part of value is because I don't want to change the percentage because I know when the uh, factor is negative one, the percentage is non negative. If the factor is not negative one, then the percentage is negative. So I don't want to. Uh, ruin my uh, percentage report by setting uh, this equal to percent. And instead, I'm going to just keep the same value that the progress bar is currently showing. All right, so, um, so far, what we have learned is this. We know that a background worker has a run worker async method, which if you call it, it's going to trigger the do work event. In the do work event handler, you basically do whatever you want. You can <clears throat> pass uh, any information that you want to uh, give to the thread uh, that is going to do the background worker as an input parameter of their own worker asynchronous. And uh, that method, that object is going to be available within the do work um, event argument. Basically, the uh, type is do work event args. So you can just uh, access that uh, input parameter around worker asynchronous in this uh, object that is passed uh, uh, as an input parameter of the do work. And uh, the next thing I just mentioned is that uh, your background worker is capable of reporting a progress. In order to make that happen, you got to be careful. In the background worker, there's a property called worker report progress. This is by default false. Make it true to let the um, background worker know your expectation. Your expectation is to report the progress. So when it says to, when you set it to true, then uh, this is what's going to happen. Whenever you want to report the progress on the, the worker thread, you got to call the background worker objects report progress method the way I did it. And I told you, you can do it in two ways. Either you just pass the percentage or you pass some uh, extra information with it the way I did it that way, right? And uh, <clears throat> uh, that's going to be uh, critical. You may say, why didn't you pass the extra information um, to this method called report progress. Why didn't you just update the uh, list that you have here uh, within your background worker? That's a very good question and it has a very important answer. The background worker cannot and must not and uh, is unable to manipulate the controls created in the UI thread. If you try manipulating uh, the, a button or a list or adding something to the list, 
within the background worker thread, that's going to cause a runtime error for a very good reason. Because UI is, <coughs> sorry, because UI is running on a different thread than the background worker, they cannot manipulate, uh, I mean, the background worker cannot manipulate the UI threads uh, control objects because that's going to be uh, a very, uh, you know, um, that's going to cause a race condition because you're basically having multiple threads accessing the shared resource. That uh, race condition cannot be tolerated because it can leave the uh, program in an uh, um, inconsistent state. So, and it may cause uh, data corruption. So when you try to access the, the controls um, from the background worker, it's gonna cause a runtime error and it's gonna crash your program. So don't do that. And instead, if you wanna pass some information from the background worker, do it the way I just said. Use the report progress as second parameter and pass whatever you wanna pass. In this case, I wanted to pass the object, the, 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 the factor, the prime factor I found for the number. Now, now what you need to know next is that uh, whenever the background worker finishes its data, finishes its job and it ends, it's going to trigger a wrong worker completed event. And you can handle this and that, that event handler for this event would be very useful to do some cleanups for your background worker. Let's remember that one as well. Just to uh, finish this video, I'm going to uh, tell you how this report progress uh, percentage and uh, factor that I passed uh, is going to affect the UI. Basically, as I said, this report progress is going to trigger the progress change event. So look at this. In the factorizer, if I show you the factorizer here, the event handler for progress change is called factorizer progress change. If you get into this, you will see that it will update the value of the tool tree progress bar, which is basically this control object, to e that percent progress percentage. This e contains both the progress percentage and also the user state. The if you want to get the progress percentage, just say E dot progress percentage. E is of type progress change the event arcs. Remember that. Then I will say, let's set the text equal to the following. If the progress percentage is 100, I will simply say done. Otherwise, I will say, please wait. That's basically the text that you saw right next to the progress bar. And uh, one more thing, if the E that user state is not null, that means you're sending something to the uh, factorize to the to the uh, to the UI from the factorizer uh, background worker. What are you sending? You're basically sending a prime factor. So I will do f the prime factors, which is going to be a binding list dot add e dot user state dot to string. Now this binding uh, list that I have here is gonna be used uh, in the following way. I'm gonna go to the form one to show you uh, when I use it. I will set it, I will assign this to the list of denominators that data source where, you know, list of denominators is a binding source. And then I will do that binding source. I will assign this binding source to the this the list box one, the data source. So this is, how I will uh, bind the binding list prime factors to the list box. So whenever I add a new value to the prime factor, it's going to appear in the list box, right? So that would be uh, something I wanted to mention. And uh, I, I can just tell you that you need to, uh, I mean, this is how the binding happens. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.